Um, so uh, what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you an overview of what has been done, like the state of the art in, in calculus of variation for epitaxial growth. And uh, most of the talk will be about uh, the, the wetting regime. And then if I have time in the end, I will talk a little bit about the de-wetting regime. So this is a paper with uh, Gianni and Irene, which is still in preparation. If I don't have time, we are not done, so it doesn't matter. So it's <laughs> I'll talk about at the next talk. Um, OK, so I'll talk a, a little bit about epitaxial growth. Most of you are familiar with it, but uh, I'll just mention a few things. So you have um, a, a substrate. So we have two materials. So there's a substrate, and you are depositing films on, on, on the substrate. And usually it's done atom by atom. And uh, at the beginning, what happened is that so uh, the, there are two types of epitaxy. So homoepitaxy if the two materials are the same, and, and heteroepitaxy if the materials are different. And so here we are going to consider the case of heteroepitaxy. So you have two different materials, so the substrate and the film, they have two different lattice dimensions. And so, uh, so this is the substrate. You start depositing atoms of the film. And even if the, the lattice dimension is different, what you observe is that at the beginning, the, the film is trying to align itself with the substrate. So this is the, the cartoon. So this is the, the lattice dimension of, of the substrate. And the film aligns itself perfectly. And so this is what is called the Frank de Merv growth mode, FM mode. And the reason why this is happening is because the, uh, the, the energy, the bonding energy per atom is much higher than the elastic strain energy per atom. But then as you keep depositing atoms, you still create, you create because the atoms of the film are trying to align themselves with the atom, the substrate, you keep creating uh, more and more strain energies. And then as you keep depositing the film, at this point, the, this flat film this is no longer uh, stable, and you start creating islands. And so uh, this, is the, like, this is the cartoon. So you, you create an island like in this, tape, this type or, or like this. And um, these are the two type of growth that we are going to study from the point of view of calculus of variation. So there is uh, the, the first one is what is called the de-wetting mode, and the second one is the, the wetting mode. So in the cartoon, is like, OK, you start with a layer of atoms. And then in the, in the second one, the SK methods, on top of these few layers of moto atoms, of atoms you, are, you have the creation of an ion. This is what is called the wetting regime, because you have a layer of atoms, this is wetting, and then on top you have an island. Instead, in, in the other growth mode, that this is what, or I will talk about this at the end, you, have, you just have the island, and surrounded you just have the substrate. So the substrate is exposed, and then there is the, the island is just on top of the substrate. And so we'll discuss from the point of view of calculus of variation when you have this type of growth and when you have the second one. OK, so let me talk about, OK, this is just some, uh, some islands, some shape of islands. Let me talk about the, the models. So the models will be uh, continuum models. And so here I just put some references that uh, both for wetting and de-wetting uh, in particular, for the wetting regime, this is the, the paper. We, uh, our model were based on a paper of, of Brian Spence in 1999. And then, as I said, if I have time uh, from the, for the de-wetting regime, this is the paper with, uh, of David and his collaborators in, in 15 and 16. OK, so let me talk about the, the wetting regime. So this is the, uh, the, the free energy is going to be, there's going to be an elastic part, and then there's going to be a surface energy. Um, for the talk, I will do a simplified model. So we will start in dimension two, and um, we'll assume the substrate is rigid. So the substrate is the region where y is equal to, is negative, and so you have this infinite part where 
you have the substrate, and so omega H here is the region occupied by the film. So H is going to be the profile of the film. The, we impose that the area, the area of the film is fixed, so the, the measure of omega H is given by a given constant D, and D in what form is going to be a very important parameter in the problem, so uh, it's going to come back uh, a lot of times. So this is the parameter D, how much, how thick is the film, essentially, and also B is like uh, the length uh, we go from zero to B. Um, we use linear elasticity, so U here is, is the displacement. And um, as I said, the, in this, uh, for the talk, for simplicity, I will assume the substrate is rigid. So the mismatch between the film and the substrate is, in, is, is described using this boundary condition. So we impose that U at the boundary between the interface between the, the film and the substrate satisfied these uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions. And so it's zero. Again, it's going to be one of the important parameters of the problem. And so, so we have D, and it's zero, and, and they're very important. And so this, this, this is telling that the energy is not at the, the U equals zero is not at the equilibrium because you have to satisfy this uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. And OK, uh, linear elasticity, so um, E of U is going to be is the symmetrized gradient, so it's, this is just the strain. And the elastic energy is just uh, the usual one. Actually, most of the application is going to be isotropic, so, but okay, so it's E, and the C is like the usual fourth order tensor, and we assume we have convexity, so everything is, is nice and, and regular. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the model in, in two dimensions. So uh, now let me talk about the surface energy. And so um, this is what we're going to assume for the surface energy. So there are three uh, parameters. So here, this is like in, in the region where you have the film. So this is, uh, this is just the length of, of the curve, right? So this is the case, this is the isotropic case. And uh, so the gamma f is just the constant which is describing the, the surface energy between the film and the vapor. And then in the region where you have the substrate, so where H is zero, you have these two constants. So this is vapor substrate, and this is film and substrate. OK, so this is the, the, the global energy. And so um, what happens when you start doing calculus variation? So here we are, we are interested in trying to minimize, uh, find uh, equilibrium, situa equilibrium solution of this promise. So, we're trying to find U and H. So the, the domain H is moving on you. And uh, the first thing that you observe is that um, there is the example you should, that if this constant, so gamma Vs minus gamma Fs, is bigger than the constant in front of the, the constant here, the, this energy is not lower semi-continuous. So you don't have a existence of minimizer. So there's no, uh, there are no solutions here when you do equilibrium solution. So then in these situations, what you do, you consider the effective energy or the relaxed energy. And so uh, what you can prove is that when you relax in this situation, when you, you consider the relaxed energy, what you obtain is it's the following. It's, so this is the relaxed energy. And um, the main change from uh, here to there, I'll describe, I'll tell you what it is, what these quantities are in a second, is that this constant disappear. Okay, so you only have the gamma f, which is the, the surface energy of, of the film. And so this is why, uh, this is why this is called wetting, because what is convenient like to do, like if you do uh, like a minimization problem, like minimizing sequence, it's much better to put a very thin layer of, of film, so you're, this is what is called wetting, so you're covering the entire region of the film. You don't leave any portion of the substrate exposed. And then once, and so this is like you get gamma f. So everywhere where here I had gamma f and then this, this other constant, we replace this part with gamma f also with gamma f. So this is like, this is the relaxed function. And then uh, the new, uh, there's also a new contribution, which is uh, 
this part. So let me tell you what they are with the, with the cartoon. So uh, gamma, so gamma, let me go back. Here you have gamma H. Gamma H is the standard graph. So you, you measure the length of the graph, but then you also measure the length of this vertical part. But then when you have these cuts, these vertical cuts, these ones are paid twice. Because uh, even if you start with configuration which are C1, essentially you have some, they get your pain twice this part and then you squeeze them together and so you pay the length twice. Okay, so this is what you get. This is why you get the, uh, the number two here. So essentially you are paying this side and you're also paying this side. This is how you get to these two. Okay? So uh, the first to prove this relaxation result was uh, Bonnet, a paper Bonnetier and Chambol in 2003. And then uh, uh, with Irene, uh, Nicola Fuchs, Fusco and Massimiliano Morini, we study a, a, a similar problem where instead of having a sharp interface model, we had a diffuse uh, interface model. So we were jumping in a continuous way between the interface, uh, the substrate, and the film. So essentially, we proved gamma convergence and relaxations. And then uh, recently, Elisa uh, and, and Paolo did the case of wet and the wet. And I'm, I'm going to come back to this paper later on. OK. And then uh, after we proved, OK, after, after this, so once you have the relaxed function, then you look to this one as equilibrium uh, configuration. So you can find U and H which are equilibrium solutions. And then you're interested in studying uh, the regularity, what is the regularity of a solu the, the solutions. And so what we were able to prove is that um, once you get the minimizer, a priori you only know that age is a function of bounded variations. But actually what we were able to prove is that the, this function is analytic except for a finite number of cusp and jump points. So let me uh, go back. So this portion here is actually it's a, an analytic function. This portion is analytic. And you only have a finite number of these vertical parts. A priori, if you are a function which is BV, you could have infinitely many jumps and infinitely many uh, cusp and, 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 and cuts. But you only have finitely many. And uh, the way we proved this was we were able to prove to use uh, or to prove that there was an interior sphere condition. So it was actually a nice argument that it was an, in a paper of Chambol and Larsen that we adapted to, to the case when we had the elasticity. Okay, so uh, this is for the regularity. And then in, in another paper, uh, Irene, Nicola, and, and Vincent Milo, study the case instead in which instead of having the isotropic case or just the length you consider an anisotropic surface energy so psi here depends to the no, depends on the normal to to the surface okay and then um nicola uh, nicola fusco and massimiliano morini study the uh, minimality of the uh, the flat configuration so i told you at the beginning that there are a few parameters that play a very important role, and so let me uh, go back. D, how much film you have is very important. The, the length here, B, is very important. And the mismatch, it's also very important. So these, these are the three key parameters, B, the length D, and is zero. And um, so essentially, What, what they did, they, they were able to prove that, say, if D, if either B is very small, or if D is, or if the, so the dimension of the film is very small, you were able, using like second variations that the flat configuration is flat, is, is the absolute minimizer. So for D, when the film is, you're very little, the film is very little, is not thick very much, you have a, the flat configuration is the global minimizer. And then if you keep increasing D, they were able to prove that for a little while, the, uh, the minimizer is no longer flat, but it's still C1. So you don't have uh, cast for jump points for D, but for D small, okay? And then eventually you expect that as D goes very large, uh, then you would expect that you have the presence of, of scaps. 
And then uh, Marco Bonaccini, which was a, is a student of, of Massimiliano Morini, did the, extended this result to the uh, anisotropic case, to uh, surface energy of this type. Okay, and then um, Barbara, Michael Gorman, and then Peter, uh, Gorman, and Barbara study scaling law. So how, if you consider equilibrium solutions, how like, we are able to find bounds from below and bounds from below, from above, in terms of the dimension of the film, D, again, that's, I told you, is an important parameter, and the mismatch is zero. So exactly how this energy scales, so then, it, and, and that's very important because if you want to send one of the parameters to infinity, so D to infinity or it's zero to infinity, you need to understand how the energy is rescaling. So these are these two papers over here. Okay. Uh, so this is dimension two. Now let me go to uh, dimension three. Uh, dimension three, let's consider again isotropic. So now the film now here, omega is a subset of R2. Here the, the surface energy now, uh, the, the graph is now, is now your surface. And so here you're measuring the two-dimensional surface. Um, same program. The, Relaxation, again, in general, this, this energy is not lower semi-continuous, so you do not have uh, a minimizer that don't exist, so you don't expect equilibrium solution, so you have to go again to study uh, the, what is the relaxed energy and, uh, for this, for in this case. Um, so the first paper about relaxation in, in the three-dimensional case, or also a higher dimension, uh, was uh, a paper of, of Chambol and, and Margarita Solci in 2007 in the graph case, and, and this paper, Andrea Chambol and, and Solci, in the case in which you don't have graphs. And the main difference is that um, in, in those two papers, the symmetrized gradient was replaced by uh, the full gradient. Okay, so uh, you, it's going to be, it's a BV function, so it's a function of bounding variation. And also, uh, age, it's, it's a BV function. And uh, GSBV, it's just, okay, I don't want to spend too much time. So there are, the gradient is a measure, but there are, there's no counterpart. Um, you're allowed to jump, and so the, the, the absolutely continuous part of the gradient is in LP. And then G is generalized, has to do with uh, uh, truncations, but I don't want to spend much time. Um, but anyway, so they got a similar result, I'll, I'll mention it in a second. And then only this year, uh, Chris Male and, and Emmanuel were able to prove the corresponding result of the 2D case in the 3D case. So in the case when you have the symmetrized gradient, um, the relaxed energy it's again similar to what we have in dimension two. And the reason why you have, uh, so you have the same uh, type of, 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 this is the generalized graph, and this is essentially the vertical part of the discontinuity set. So U is jumping, and where it jumps on the vertical part, you're paying twice on the left and on the right. And uh, the reason why there was this long gap between uh, the paper, this paper of 2007 and the paper, uh, the paper of 2019 is that if you are working uh, in 3D, if you want to do existence, if you want to do relaxations, you have to work with the, uh, what are called function of bounded deformation. So now you assume that the symmetrized gradient is a measure in distributional sense. And, and then, again, S for special, because you don't have counterpart, and then G has to do with truncation. But the point is, like, the theory at the time was not advanced enough, like, the defined properties of, of the space GSBD were not advanced enough at the time. But now there's been a lot of work done, uh, Johnny, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot of people, but there's been a lot of work done in recent years. And one of the main thing is that if you are in BV, so like in W11, if you have growth one, Korn's inequality fails. But if you are in the space GSBD, there are now some forms of uh, Korn inequality, and so using these new forms of Korn inequality, the, the, you, which are in these papers, you are able to, again, relax, obtain a new relaxation, the relaxation that 
um, in three dimension three. But so this is much more complicated than what we did in 2D. It's because it relies a lot on, on all these property of all spaces. Yeah. Okay, uh, now uh, other models. So uh, again, Marco Bonaccini study in, in dimension three, the stability of the flat configuration, both uh, for in the case in which you, instead of having an isotropic surface energy, you get an isotropy surface energy. And then uh, with the Irene, Nicole, and Max, what we did, we studied the presence of dislocations in, uh, uh, in epitaxial growth. And essentially, what we prove is that if the mismatch is zero, is very large, and if the constant, if the surface energy, so this constant is very large, then uh, if there are dislocations, they move at the bottom of the interface between the film and the substrate, which is what is observed experimentally. And then we were also able to prove that in the same condition that if you add the nucleation energy, it's more convenient to create this location rather than having, say, a cusp. Like, you relax some of the energy and, and it's, you're better off creating these locations. Okay, so we're not talking about this very much. Um, then, different model, but so Irene, Aldo Pratelli, and Barbara study how the shape, different shapes of, of the highlands. I, there was a cartoon at the very beginning, you could have uh, half domes, pyramids, and when are, like, so they study when you get one shape or the other. The model is slightly different, so that's why I put other models. And then uh, uh, Marco Carroccia, uh, Riccardo Cristofori, and this is study the case in which you also have ad atoms. So you have atoms jumping on, on the, ad, ad, where the film is. Again, the model is slightly different, but just, I just wanted to mention. And then recently, uh, Krauss and Piovano studied the, uh, how you go from the discrete model to the continuum model, like using gamma convergence, you can, you can do this. Okay, so this is for n equal three. How am I doing with time? Uh, eight, minutes. eight minutes, okay. So this is roughly in the static case. So now, now let me go to uh, the dynamics. So uh, in the case of dynamics, again, I start with two dimension and then I go to, to three dimension. The type of evolution that you can have with epitaxial growth, you can either motion by mean curvature or surface diffusion. And um, they correspond, the first one you take, if you take the energy, uh, the energy that we consider, so you do the grain flow in L2, or in the other case, you do the grain flow in, in H minus one. Uh, so the problem here, when we do either, either mean curvature or surface diffusion, the main problem is that if the surface energy is too anisotropic, and uh, I'll explain in a second. So when you write down, say, uh, the, in the case of the mean curvature, is say if, so psi, this is the surface energy. So if you write g of theta, theta is the angle that the normal forms with the x-axis. So if this quantity here, it's negative, so, in front, so here your, equation, your evolution equations, becomes backward parabolic. And so it's ill pose. So it doesn't, so you don't, in general, like it's an ill pose equation. And so uh, the, the way to, circum to, to solve this problem usually is to add a regularizing term. So you add, and usually what you do, you add epsilon times the curvature square, because essentially you're penalizing corners. And once you add this with this penalization, so this is classical from, from the work of, of Herring, and also Mullins and, and so on. And so uh, you get, a, a, in the case of mean curvature, you get a fourth order parabolic equation. And so this is like, I'm just quoting papers, like Angen and Gert, in the Carlo, Gert, and Poly Widulio. This is some of the papers. Many people uh, have done this. Okay, so let's go back to the... Uh, to our functional, so uh, elastic energy, anisotropic surface energy, plus uh, regularization. So the grain flow in L2 was done by Paolo, so this was part of his PhD thesis, and so he proved uh, short existence and regularity of solutions, like dimension two. And then uh, the case uh, in H minus one, the gradient flow, so it was, again, Irene, Nicola Fusco, and Massimiliano, 
Morini, again, short time exists and regularity, and so now this equation, now this is, it would be without regularization, would be fourth order, regularization is sixth order evolution equation. The main difficulty uh, compared to what I wrote down before is that on the evolution, you have this W of V of U. So on, on the boundary of the domain, you have uh, E of U, so you have the trace of the, uh, of the elastic energy and of, also of E of U. So you need a lot of regularity to, to be able to write down, to make sense of this kind of equations because uh, being in H1, it's not, it's not, it doesn't give you enough regularity. So this is, you need much stronger regularity. Okay, so this is uh, what was done. Uh, and then Massimiliano is going to speak uh, about this uh, later this afternoon. So, uh, as I said, if the surface energy, Paolo, stop me whenever, and I can stop whenever, okay. Um, <laughs> if, if the surface energy is too anisotropic, the equation is backward parabolic. Uh, but if it's the surface energy is isotropic, or if it's convex enough, there's no reason why you should have a penalization. So actually, so what Nicola, Yulin, and Massimiliano were able to prove is that if you assume that the surface energy satisfies this type of, of, of conditions, then uh, you do have short time existence regularity without adding uh, regularization terms. Massimiliano is going to tell you all about this, so I'm going to jump. Same dimension n equal 3, it was the same type of situations. When we work on this, we had to add a, a penalization argument, so we have a, a penalizing term. And even worse was like we had, we needed, we are in dimension three, so on the boundary are in dimension two. And so we needed P bigger than two because we needed to be subcritical for the sublevel embedding. And, uh, and so again, uh, we were able to prove short time existence and regularity of solutions. And then now find, like, now in the isotropic case, uh, let me jump. There's a recent paper of Nicola, Yulin, and, and Massimiliano in which in the isotropic case, they were able to, to remove the, uh, the regularizing term. So you have, you have this. Uh, okay. How am I doing? Two minutes, okay. Um, now, let me jump to the uh, de-wetting regime. Uh, so I'll start again with the, with the static case. So this is uh, work that Elisa and Paul have been doing. So they consider uh, the case in which the film and the substrate are two different uh, materials, but in such a way, the, the, the lame moduli of the material are quite different, so here, the, the elastic energy is, is discontinuous, and same kind of uh, surface energy. And okay, the model there's a diffuse interface, but so what they were able to prove is that the uh, in, again starting from a diffuse model is that the elastic energy, uh, the relaxed energy, takes the following form, uh, form. and so again you have. Uh, you have these two, the, the minimum between these two constants. So if, uh, if this constant is bigger than gamma f, you are in the, in the wet regime. If, you are in the, in the, if gamma f is less than this constant, you are in the uh, de-wet regime. And so in the de-wet regime, and I'll just stop here, um, what's happened is that the substrate is exposed. So you have an island, and, you have, and the substrate here is exposed. And so you have formation of, of corners. And so now what Irene and, and, and Gianni, what, what we are doing right now, uh, we are working on uh, a model, on a variational model which was proposed by uh, David his collaborators, in which we studied the dynamics of this problem. And uh, it's, so you have evolution equations, but then you also consider the motion of the endpoints. So the island, the island is touching the substrate at alpha and beta, and so you have to add, so you essentially do the gradient flow, H minus one gradient flow for, uh, uh, for the energy, but you also do it for the endpoints. And so we are, right now we are 
doing minimizing movement and proving uh, that you have uh, existence and short time regular, uh, regularity of solution for this problem. Okay, and it's work in progress. Okay, I can stop here. Okay. Yeah, because essentially a, the displacement you can be discontinuous on both sides, right? So it's and and also and CASP is the same. Like yeah, it allows to have yeah to discontinue it on both sides. And I think actually there are observed experiment. You have a paper in which you, there are that you observe that there are actually CASPs, and so it's, it's that they, they yeah. Yeah, they don't go. Yeah, but I know. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, we have been trying to prove analytically that there are, like, in, in some situation, there are either cusp or, or, like, if D is very large, that we have not been able to prove it. That, like. But we have never been able to prove analytically that there exists. We expect, say, if the mismatch is very large and D is very large, you should have, and, and they're observed they observe experimental, but we have not been able to prove it that, uh, yeah, it would be nice, but we, we don't know how to do it. <coughs> so in the case where you get cusps, mm. the cusps are uh, a way of relaxing the strain. Yes. To the side, yeah, yeah. They just stop there, yeah. yeah. But that's what this is about to get because to prove that they actually, this location will create a steep upper track, they migrate to the and they move down. substrate, and then, and then the field becomes flat. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just a short one. So you uh, are working with the I mean, Dr. Weed also for the evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we? No, I think we just have, no, it's iso isotropic case. Yeah, for, yeah, right now, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 